how do we go about this? Okay, well, uh, there's a formula. This is statistics, so there is a formula. And the formula calculates a student's T-score. A student's T-score. So, uh, you remember the student's T-distribution introduced in Chapter 5, and we used it somewhat in Chapter 6. We're going to calculate the T-score for this, for this data. All right. And the um, calculation, T star, is, and I just want to make sure I get it right, so I'm going to look it up in the book. And you'll find this you know, at the end of the chapter before you get to the problems. Uh, where is that? Page 294, testing a single mean. T equals 2, and I write it a little bit differently than the book. Okay, the book writes it sort of like this. It's x bar minus mu divided by um, s over the square root of n. So let's use some parentheses here to organize it. You hopefully recognize s divided by square root of n as being the uh, standard error mean. And this is the difference between a measurement and a population mean of sorts. So this, this may r remind you of the, uh, the z-score calculation that we did earlier. And, and in fact, literally it is. It's measuring um, a, the number of standard deviations that this result is away from that result. Well, and I use a t-star here. I... Um, the book uses T with an asterisk symbol opposite from what I do. And to me, this makes sense. I'm cal to me, when I do this, this is called the calculated T-score, the way I use the T-star. So I, I don't mean to add to confusion. Statistics has enough confusing stuff in it. But to me, I think this makes a lot more sense than how the book uses the T and the T-star. All right, now let's, let me adjust this formula. We can invert and multiply. So using a little algebra, we can write this as x bar minus mu over s times the square root of n. So this is a formula I would normally use. This is Greek letter mu. I'm going to invert this and put the square root of sample size on top. Well, as usual, I'm getting low on space here. Um, let me let me calculate it. So I'm going to kind of rearrange things on the board here real quick. This was the formula that we need. And I'll calculate it over here to the left. So I have um, T star is, parentheses, X bar is 7.0. And we're comparing it to the hypothesis mean of 5.1. So we're going to subtract it. Square root of 49, which 49 was the sample size. And divide by S, that was 2.5. So let me uh, kind of separate these. Here's my calculation. Sometimes we call it a t-test. Or a test for significance. T-test. So I need to by my calculator, so it's in the room. I'm gonna <laughs> interrupt the video here for a minute and get my calculator. I'm back. Here's uh, the calculation. We can make life a little easier for us. This is gonna be, uh, what is this? 1.9 times seven over 2.5. So seven divided by 2.5 is 5.32. So T star, is 5.32. Okay, now uh, you think about that and think, okay, that represents 5.32 standard deviations. Now recall that anything over three standard deviations is very unusual. Five is nearly off the chart. It's a very unusual, um, unusually high number of standard deviations. So what does that mean for us? Well, we, we need to go to the back of the book 
and I need to erase a little bit here. So let me erase my, my formula. Now, to use a chart on page, what is it, page 650 or 51, I believe that's where it is. To use that chart, we also need to know the degrees of freedom. And the degrees of freedom in testing a single mean is going to be n minus 1. So in our case, it's 48 degrees of freedom. So let's turn back to page... 650, I believe it is. Might be 651. It's page 651. So we go down to 48 degrees of freedom. That's about the fourth line down on the left on this page. And I'm going reading across on that line there. It starts with 00, 0 0.25, 0 0.68. I hope you found that. As you continue to go, it goes up to a maximum of 3.27. See that? So 3.27 is far to the right on this chart. So where is 5.32? Well, 5.32 would be over here, <laughs> further to the right on the chart. So it's, it's literally is off the chart to the right in this case because it's a high T-score. Now, compare that, please, with the probability of the top. The probabilities start off at 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.25, and they keep dropping. And the last one is 0 0.001. So, as we go to the right, this T-score represents a very small probability, less than 0 0.0001. So, we call the p-value is going to be uh, less than 0 0.001. Now, uh, this is the all-important number. Okay, Everything else just gets us to this point. The p-score is what tells you how you're going to conclude this problem. It's a very tiny number. It's less than 1 out of 1,000 less than one out of a thousand. So here's how it works. If we fail to reject the null hypothesis, we fail to reject it. Um, actually, that's not good. Let me, let me try this again. If we reject, start over, if we reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative, the probability that we'll be making a mistake by rejecting the null hypothesis when it's actually true in favor of the alternative is less than one chance out of a thousand. So think about that. I reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative. The odds of me making an error is extremely small. It's a very good bet. That's going to be our conclusion. That this evidence shows significantly that this company really is losing more days to sickness than the national average. It is a significant difference. Well, I'm going to write down my conclusion to this. And uh, I need to erase part of the board here. So, let's see. Let's go down.